Hi friends, Mark here again from Shark Bait. And uh, this little video is one I've put off doing for a while uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, waiting for more of the product to arrive. Two, I was on an eight day charter. Three, I got the flu and so I've been out of here for a couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, first day back and definitely wanted to get onto this little video about the new Fathom 2 Lover Drake Reels. These were introduced at iCast and I will say back in 2012-ish uh, when I introduced you know, the Fathoms 2 speeds you know, from Penn, I said those are groundbreaking reels. Um, given the price point, major manufacturer trying to compete with Abbott in terms of offering 2 speed gear, uh, a lot of strengths on the old Fathoms. You know, and they've caught a lot of fish over the years. They had their weaknesses too. You know, prime in my mind was the low gear. You know, the low gear, even on the 60 size, was the same as it was on the smaller reels, two and a half to one. That's too fast, you know, and should be the bigger the reel, the lower the gear ratio on the bottom end. You know, the upper end can be a different story, you know, but down low, we want the cranking power and we're not fishing big reels you know, to fish light line typically. We're fishing big reels for heavier test and bigger fish. So a lower low gear is an important thing. Now, with respect to the new Fathom 2s, you know, I guess the background music for this would be the good, the bad, the ugly. That's my take on the reels. So, sorry if I'm blowing a, uh, you know, poking a hole in somebody's balloon. You, know, you don't get everything. Uh, and again, the Fathoms are made to hit a certain price point, even though that price point is a moving target. From where they were originally talked about you know, at ICAST in 2022, you know, we're seeing that price point escalate. And come January of 2023, that price point's going to go up. Here's the reality for those of you who never took an economics course in college. When you pump out a lot of dollars, the dollars become worth less. Not worthless necessarily, but worth less, especially within the international community and trading partners. So uh, the dollar of 2012 was actually worth a hell of a lot more than it is today after literally trillions of dollars have been pumped out by the federal government for whatever bogus reason. You know, we, the consumers, are the ones who will be paying the price for that government largesse with our tax-paying dollars. And the consequence to this is that you can't get something for nothing and something's got to give if you're going to be maintaining the same price points. Now, PIN escalated the price points a bit, and that will be escalating again somewhat, again, come January. So I'm not even going to talk about the pricing. Um, but let's talk about the gear. And that's where we're in the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, actually, they're not that ugly. Um, and there's some good to be said. I want to talk about you know the, the two speeds primarily. But before I do so, let me just say, PIN does have the series of single speeds. And as before, there are a couple of pretty neat pieces within this world of single speeds. Specifically for the Wahoo guys, that 40 narrow high speed. Uh, good old Bob Cherry, one of his favorites, he, he recognized that just as I did back 2012 or 14 or whatever the hell it was. That piece, the 40N, is a barn burner. You know, it's, it's, it's a speedy reel, 7 to 1 on that, that high gear. You know, that makes it quite interesting. You know, and even in the two-speed mode, I think it's six to one on the high speed, that's pretty darn quick. You know, but the big improvement on these fathoms is that the low gear changes. You know, it may be two and a half to one on the smaller pieces, and then when we get into the 40 size, the 40 narrow, that's dropping down under two to one. And on the 60 size, even less than that. But let's, let's look at these pieces to begin with a little bit. This is a 15 narrow. And this might be kind of a jigger's little dream. Nice little piece. You can probably get, oh, 400 yards of 40 maybe on this piece. So 300 yards of 50 uh, on the braid. Now, this is what they did. The ramp for the lever, well, that's pretty cheesy. A little bit of stamped aluminum here. The foot on the reel, as always, Pin uses the stamped foot. And, you know, um, I've gotten spoiled with some of the machined aluminum stuff like Avid did over the years you know, and other manufacturers, so Kuma did you know, as well. The stamped feet, it gets the job done, um, but if you don't use a back brace, 
I've seen these things literally bend in under the hood, under load again, um, and fail. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, Penn's been doing this for years and years. Maybe he's a little bit skinnier than it used to be, uh, a little bit bent as well. But that's what they're doing. The pieces are ported nicely. I like the way that's done. So we've got a couple of ports here when it's up on end on the racks. A couple of ports back here, port on the gear case. You know, that's nice. Nice to see that type of stuff. I don't know if, if you can make it out much on the video, but that's good. That's well thought out. They're going to drain. Stainless steel gears, you know, both the pinion and the main. So that's a plus. Now we get to kind of the weird stuff. The lever, you're never going to miss this lever. It's a great big old piece of plastic, so it's a big chunk. What they did that I think is pretty clever here, on the preset knob, you can't just come up, or some, some you know, buddy fiddling with your gear can't come along and just move the damn thing uh, and change you know, your drag setting. You have to pull it out, and then you can adjust it. So you pull the knob out, and now we can adjust. And again, you only adjust the preset when you're in free spool. Otherwise, you can damage a reel. I think that's darn clever. You know, that's a good feature. The big plasticky knob, eh, I'm not impressed. You know, Handle-wise, they went to a T instead of the little oval football stuff. So instead of copying Shimano uh, and going with a football, now we're back to a T. And of course, I like a T that's candid. You get a little more power out of that. They'll probably have many aftermarket handles available. They did some cutouts on the handle. That's for cosmetic purposes. Oh yes, they're going to weigh less because of that. <clears throat> and you know, maybe so, uh, but how much weight are you going to save? Um, it looks kind of cute though, kind of silver on the inside, black anodized on the outside. But here is the ugly part, our fugly. It's, well, <laughs> I won't, maybe I shouldn't do that. It, it's painted! The damn finish is painted. Now, it's not anodized aluminum. Um, it is painted. It's a painted finish. Daiwa did that on the old Soft Saltist series reels back, I don't know, 2005, 2004. Um, and, you know, they'll show their wear over years uh, use. You know, weight's a little bit less given what they did. It's a three quarter frame, uh, so side plate and frame, and then we've got, you know, the end housing. You know, that adds some strength, and they're able to cut the weight back a little bit on these guys compared to last series. Now, I mentioned the exchange rate, given the dollar's worth less than it used to be, some things probably had to go away you know, on these. Uh, and I'm sure Penn had to commit to some pretty high quantities. These, again, are a Chinese-made import. Um, but, you know, they're, they're pretty doggone nice. Free spool performance across the board is good, but we've seen a couple of little questions uh, we'll talk about. Um, but nice reel. Shifting mechanism, clean. You know, it's a push button. And then thumb on the reset. That drops the gear ratio down. Pushing here, pushing here. So, you know, it pups are back up again with your thumb. So it's easy to have your hand on the knob. Go ahead and depressing it you know, to low gear with your index finger and with your thumb, go ahead and bump her back up. Nice. You know, ergonomics are very, very good. And in case you forget what the gear ratios are, pins very nice for those of us that are getting a little senile like myself, um, you've got specs on the side. So it'll tell you how many, you know, yards per crank, you know, uh, at the di different gear ratios and what the gear ratios are on the reel itself, as well as what model it is, in case you forgot what the reel was. Okay, uh, it's nice of it for those of us who have a memory uh, gap or two. Still, you know, in order to advance the lever you know, to full beyond strike position where you should be fishing it, you have to depress a button right here on the side. So, nicely thought out. And again, for a lot of us, you know, on the two-speed side anyway, the most useful pieces, this little 15 X and LD is going to be one of them. But for, I think, a lot of guys, the 25 size as your, call it 30, 40, um, 50 pound braid, uh, 40 pound on top, enough room to do that. And I want you to notice too on the spool, it's, it's um, cast and then machined. And instead of a little piece of rubber here on the, in the center of the arbor, it's knurled you know, metal. So that's gonna help keep that braid from spinning. We'll still, when we spool up, uh, make use of, of, 
a particular material that we use that's non-absorbent, you know, that gives that braid something to grip onto. But this is nice to see. You know, that's a plus. And you still have the rings on the spool itself, so you have an idea when you've got a third or two-thirds of the line on the piece. Um, let's see here. Pins for specs, I'll, I'll refer you back to our website because um, we'll post the numbers there and those will be pins numbers. You know, and their numbers are usually a little more uh, generous than maybe we would be. Um, they claim 475, a 50 pound braid on the 25. You know, and maybe so, you know, which means probably realistically 300 yards of the braid and you probably have room for 30, 40, maybe even 50 yards of mono on top at, at say 50. You know, so a 25 size, really, really useful you know, for a lot of us. And then we get into the 40. And the 40, uh, a little more compact again than where it was before, given the change of construction and going three quarters on the frame. Uh, the 40, again, uh, will have single speed and two speed versions. The two speeds are the ones of interest to me right now. And <clears throat> we're six to one on the high and we drop down 1.9 to one on the low instead of two and a half to one. So instead of five and two and a half, <clears throat> it's six to one and then 1.9. That's well thought out. That's like uh, a little more like an Avid HX in terms of low gear ratio at 1.9. So, you know, pins are learning from Avid. Do I say that? No, I don't know, but they're learning from competition and competition is a great thing. So nice little piece. And again, we'll see how the handle does, uh, if having the cutouts change the strength of it or not. I really don't think it will. Uh, I think in terms of weight savings, I don't think there's a hell of a lot you can say about that. But it looks kind of cute, uh, the way they did it. And then, Penn went to two larger pieces, one of which we have, one we don't. Um, in the old days, with the old Fathoms, they had a 40, and then they made it a little bit wider and called it a 60. And so the 40 would hold, say, 500 yards of 80 you know, pound braid, and the 60 would give you, say, 500 yards of 100. Well, they learned a little bit, and they made the 60, instead of going wide, it's taller and it's skinnier. Nice. That is a nice idea. Uh, again, we'll see how the piece does. Now, this one has a bit of a problem. And that's what I said, you know, it, it's, we're not perfect uh, yet. Um, we haven't seen any issues so far, and we've had these in our hands now at least, say, from the 30s and down since September. 40s and 60s probably came in in October. Um, but this is a 60, and this one, one of our customers let me know that there are some problems. Um, if you have the preset, let's back off the preset a little bit. Okay, well, okay, there's pretty decent free spool, but you, know, you can probably catch, you know, there's good free spool performance, but realistically, hell, that's no drag. <laughs> now, if I move, bump the drag up to a more reasonable setting, now well, let's see, that's not enough. Let's bring this puppy up to what it would normally be. I'm going by feel, not with a spring scale like I should, but let's say We've got 80 pound braid, 60 pound on top. I want to have about 20 pounds worth of drag. Okay, 20 pounds worth of drag. Let's see what the free spool's like. Whoops, where'd it go? I'm sorry, there's no freaking free spool on this thing. So this one is DOA. And we're gonna see that. I don't know how many other 60s got out. Uh, that is doornail. But this puppy is gonna go straight back to pin, and pin's gonna make it right uh, by replacing it because it's not right out of the box. New gear, they're gonna learn as they go. This piece has a problem. Haven't seen those problems on the 40s and smaller. On the 60, obviously, I'm seeing a problem with this one. You know, will that be fixed? Damn straight it's gonna be fixed. You know, but right now, that's an issue. And pin goes a step further. They made a blinking 80. I haven't seen the 80 yet, other than iCast, they haven't shipped them yet. So I'm going to guess that they're getting the bugs out and they probably got some feedback on the 60 and Penn will come back on the 80s and cure the bug. But I've got a kind of a question there on an 80. These are relatively inexpensive reels. 
we don't fish an 80 size reel to catch crappie or catfish. Um, we fish an 80 with an expectation of loading on 100, 130 pound braid, 130, typically on an 80, maybe even 200. Um, that's not the place to go cheap. There's a reason why 80s are typically around a grand and not sitting around 350, 400 bucks. You, know, you can't get enough meat, not enough strength, you know, to deal with the drag settings that would justify fishing those line classes. So I'm going to be skeptical uh, as a fisherman and as just a you know, cynical old skeptical fart you know, about that size within this category of reel. Certainly going up you know, to the 40 size and down, proven, you know. The new 60s wants to get the bugs out. Well, that's going to be a pretty interesting piece, and it's nicer that it's skinnier instead of having to level the line way back and forth and back and forth, you know, like you did on the old fathoms. And it's great having a low gear ratio. You know, and I should mention, on that 60, you know, the gear ratio drops down to 1.6 to 1 on the low end. Uh, on the 80, again, it'll be 1.6 to 1 on the low end, 4.2 on the high. Um, and Penn is claiming about 800 yards of 130 on the 80 size. They're claiming about 700 yards of 100. Again, Penn's specs are typically very much you know, optimistic you know, in my mind. We'll have firm numbers on, based on the, what the guys get out of them in the rigging. And given I've been gone effectively between the eight day and then getting the bug, I've been out of here for almost a month. Uh, we'll, we'll have better numbers that I, I should be quoting on here and I'm not. Um, Let's see, what else can I say? Oh, 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 oh. Again, this is kind of a trick idea. Here we have our 60, okay? Okay, well, it's a defective 60, but it's still a 60. And it's got a crossbar, and it's got lugs, okay? We've got lugs on it when you go this size. You don't have lugs on a 40, okay? 60 you do. But you know what they did that was kind of cool? This top bar is removable, so you can take the damn thing off. A couple of screws, boom, boom, and you can pop that thing off, and now we've got an open top on the 60. I like that idea. You know, again, this size reel, given the drag, you'd probably be fishing if you're going to load her up with 100 pound. You know, I'd be thinking I'm fishing the thing maybe 30 pounds of drag, 25, 30. You know, maybe you want a crossbar on there, but for those of us who want to be able to thumb the spool, put your fingers on it, whatever, being able to pop that top bar is a good thing, and it's a narrow, narrow frame, not a wide frame. So it better be able to deal with those forces. Yeah, you know, it would make a whole lot of sense for it too. So, you know, I, I think, like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I gotta say this lever is kinda ugly in my mind. Maybe it's gonna be prettier as time goes on. You sure don't miss that it's there, and it's a big old chunk of plastic. Uh, the finish, okay, that's kinda ugly in my mind too. Um, <laughs> I like the machines looping them, but you're not paying for it. Um, you know, fairly inexpensive. And they did some good things as far as the porting of the reels. Uh, so for long-term ownership, I look at that as a positive. So, I mean, hit the price point well. For a lot of us going out, especially on some of the bigger gear, we think we're not gonna fish all that much. We'll fish more of the lighter stuff. Maybe you guy can make a case, you know, that saving a few bucks here is a good thing. I'll just, I'll just, you know, caution you a little bit on the 80. Let's, let's see how those things turn out on a bigger fish. And again, you know, catching a world record catfish, that's one thing. You know, catching a 300 pound tuna you know, or you know, 500 pound marlin or better on a sub $500 reel that's not made out of machine aluminum, I got my worries you know, that way. So that may not be the best call, but again, we've got a lot of guys in, in Northern California, for instance, that are now catching some big bluefin. You know, we've been donating our big fish to them. One of these days, they'll donate some albacore back down this way. You know, for a lot of those guys, they're thinking, you know what, I don't want to invest $1,000 per reel or more. You know, I'd like to be able to try and get this job done on the bluefin. Who knows how many years they'll be here. <coughs> Reality, <laughs> these fish have been around for about, about eight years. You know, a little more talking about that stuff I want to do on another video here later on today, maybe. So in the event, that's the Fathoms. The good, the bad, the ugly, the Fathom 2s are on the market now. Penn did some nice things with them. They've got some things they obviously had to take away given the value of the dollar. But in general, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. 
thanks for watching. Thanks for checking them out. And check the specs on our website. Obviously, you know, if you like the, the YouTube videos we do, please come back and visit Shark Tank, our retail shop, our online store. We were the first online you know, purveyors of saltwater gear you know, back uh, 24 years ago or so. You know, maybe a little longer than that. You know. And arguably, we've got you know some very, very good, knowledgeable people here. We do a better job in terms of rigging than anybody else does. We've probably done more rigging than anybody else does if we've included Brave with so many of the reels we sell and get them spooled up for guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting us. And again, some of the videos we're doing, we're posting on Rumble, uh, BitChute, uh, Odyssey, given the censorship that's been going on with YouTube. So, you know, stay tuned to those other channels and we'll go from there. I better answer the phone. Thanks for watching, Mark out.